Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing pork spare ribs. We're gonna do two different racks on two different kettles, but using the smoke and sizzle on both of them. The difference is gonna be, in this rack, we're gonna be doing them at 225, using salt and pepper only with the smoke and sizzle. In the other kettle, we're gonna be using the smoke and sizzle as well, of course. We're doing them at 275, using Cosmos Q Honey Killer Bee. Now I'll put a link to a video I did with some chicken wings the other night that was absolutely, they were dynamic and they had that honey killer bee on them as well. I love that flavor, so we we'll use that there. Now, the whole premise behind this is we're gonna to try to figure out, does it matter really how much 50 degrees makes? Does it make a big difference? Does it make a difference in the texture, the taste, the tenderness, the juiciness, that kind of, the bark, that kind of thing? We're gonna let each rack be its own. If this one needs spritzing, we'll spritz it. If that one needs spritzing, we'll spritz it. If they don't, we won't. We're not gonna do the same thing to each rack because we're not sure which one, will, you know, what they'll need and we're, we're trying to figure out the differences the temperature uh, change makes. So. Now we'll get them trimmed up and membranes off and seasoned up and all that stuff right now. Okay guys, here we go. We're gonna get these membrane taken off. And what I like to do to take the membrane off is turn it over, of course, and get my knife under the membrane a little bit. Just a little table knife. I can get under it a little bit and get it started. And then I'll use paper towel to get a hold of it with. If you get lucky, it'll come all at one time. Sometimes I do, most time I don't. I'll pull it off that way. So now what I'll do is I'll, I'll take, take this edge meat off. If there's much of a flap there, I'll remove it like I'm doing here. There's not a lot here on this rack. Usually there's a little bit more than this. It's kind of nice. There's not much to do on this one on the back side here. Leave that on. Any extra fat that I can get under, I'll take off. That's, that's pretty good though, guys. It doesn't look bad at all. I think there's a little bit of fat on this edge over here I'll remove. Yeah. I like to make sure these floppy ends are gone because they will just burn. So I like to take them off. I get that last real good bone and square it off. There's a lot of meat I'm taking off here, but I'll use this somewhere. I'll put it in the freezer and I'll use it somewhere. Take that off, square it up a little bit. Uh, round off these corners a little bit because they will, those corners will get burnt as well. On this end, I'll cut a little bit of that off. I feel like I need to cut right through there. Spread that off. There we go. That's better. I like to use duck fat for my binder. It's plain old duck fat here. Um, and I just spray it on there very lightly. I don't, I don't douse it completely in it. And on this rack, we're going to be using the um, Cosmos Q Honey, Color, Honey Killer Bee. Man, it's so good. I can't wait to try these ribs. And we'll just give it a good, decent coating on the back. I'm more worried about the top because this isn't going to be a lot of flavoring we're going to get from this, but definitely want to get some on here, say the least. Good old coating. Now we'll turn it over and we'll spread the other side just lightly. We'll put it on this side. We'll go a little bit heavier on this side, as you can tell. Because I want a good coating of this stuff. It's going to make a great bark. Now my concern, to be honest with you, where it's a, it's a pretty sweet rub, um, so there's sugars in this. And sugars will tend to burn a little bit. I'm kind of worried about that a little bit. I want to try this rub so bad. So I want to try to keep them from burning. I'll, keep, I'll, I'll spritz them as I need to. Try to keep it moist so it doesn't burn too bad. But sugars will turn black and look kind of rough sometimes. So we'll have to see how it goes. But there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and get them onto the kettles. Okay, guys, now we'll go ahead and get them on our kettle. Each one on our own kettles. And we'll uh, go from there. We'll get them on here. And... Looking good. Temperature, this is the salt and pepper side here at 225. We'll get those. On here, get a little rub on that or the other one, no big deal. But put it on there. Salt paper, good to go. Close that back up fast as we can. Save our heat. So we'll get these on now. Remember, these are being cooked at 275. Really good, good and tacky there. Again, we're going to just form up really well. It's heavy form here is how they're going to cook. So we want to make sure they're good and plump all the way around. Put a great or damper over the meat so that the smoke comes up and goes over across our meat. That's always something we got to remember to do. So same thing over there. We're good there. So now we'll let these go and we will check on them in about three hours. All right, guys, it's been about three and a half hours now. I think I'll go ahead and look at these. I'm probably going to go ahead and wrap them. Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap them. I'm get a little bit of coloration there, but man, they, and they look a little bit dry, but they're going to be good. I'll put some butter on down for these. They're nowhere near ready, of course. I get some bounce to them, but they, uh, they look fantastic really really good so I'll put these actually I put them right here I put some butter down I've got some butter pads here I want to just put down 
put these on top of put these ribs down right on the top of that put a couple on the back side of it as well it's a big one there there's one now I'll wrap these up I'll set that for the other rack there wrap these up as tight as I can get them that butter in there and I put them back on the kettle meat down so they're actually meat side down bone side up so we'll put the lid back on that now we'll take a look at the other rack too so yeah wow these this rack looks really great too guys I'm real real happy with this rack as well it's got some good bounce to it it's getting there these are the ones at 225 salt and pepper only Colors fantastic. We'll get these on some butter. butter as well and wrapped up as well. Now that don't know what this foil's doing to the camera, but it sure has blinded me. <laughs> Let's see if we can get these wrapped up. Just, just some butter only. I'm not putting like brown sugar and honey and all that stuff of this. I wanted sweet ribs I would have put sugar on them in the first place so that's what these are salt and pepper only get these wrapped up good and tight as well sometimes when you wrap and you've got bones exposed already where you get pulled back from the cooking which you'll eventually have you gotta be a little more careful when you're wrapping foil with bones exposed because it will crack that foil and tear it and you don't want to have that happen of course so meat side down as we can get them we'll get the lid back on these and get them cooking again so we're back in just uh when uh i guess we'll probably leave these on a couple hours okay guys it's been about four and a half hours now i just want to get a check on these and see where the temperature's at and see how, the, how they look and, and get a feel for how the three the 225 compares to the 275 so we'll take this off real quick and we will look and see how these ribs look really good inside here start to get a little pullback see there's some, there's some some bones are exposed and getting some good exposure let's turn these over and let's look at them oh my goodness <laughs> those look just absolutely unbelievably good and they smell so good let's check the temperature to see where we're at 177 178 okay we're right we're at we're four and a half hours in guys and we're at right at 175 to 180 very happy with that. That's really good. These ribs are getting better. I mean, they're we're looking for it when they start to break. They're not breaking yet. Um, they are very flexible. They're getting the pullback. They look fantastic at this point. So we're going to let them go just a little bit longer. Wrap them back up. Remember, these are the ones that have been going at 225, four and a half hours, salt and pepper only. I want to be careful to put my foil back on. I don't want to pop that foil, those bones. Now we're gonna keep going at 225 and we will check back on these in a little bit. Guys, now we'll check on these. These are the ones we cooked at 275 so far, four and a half hours as well. we'll take a look at these and see how they do and see how they're temping. Gosh, there's juice everywhere. We gotta watch we don't lose our juice here. Well, this butter probably is still my gosh, they look fantastic. And we got some really good pullback on these. These might be ready, guys. Oh my gosh, let's see how they look. Look at that. Let's try our thermometer on these and see how they... Yeah, these are over 200, just, just over 200. Did you see the 207, 208? 208. They're super tender, guys. I think we're gonna actually pull these and let these rest. We've got great pullback on these bones. They feel like I say incredibly tender. I really didn't want didn't want to fall off the bone, but I'm gonna tell you what, we can tell a big difference at 50 degrees. Look at that. Pull back on those bones, the tenderness, there's about 30 degrees difference in temperature. These are much further along and, and actually done. Oh, it's hot compared to the other ones. So we're gonna get these off, let them rest for a bit, and we'll give them a try and see how they taste. I'm excited about it. I'm glad they're done because I'm really hungry. <laughs> so we'll uh we'll get these off and check them out and see how they do, guys. We're gonna let them rest. 
probably about an hour, maybe probably not an hour, 30 minutes or something like that, and uh, get them cut up, we'll try. So. Okay, folks, here we go. We got this one rack done. We'll go ahead and get it cut and see how it looks. We're gonna try one of these ribs and see how it does. Now, I usually cut to turn it over. Just get that a little bit first before I do this. Let you see it. Looks really, really good. Um, let's see if we can cut some of these. When I'm in the store, I try to try to find the ones that are absolutely straight as bones I can find because it makes this job right here of cutting them much easier. Take a look at that, guys. It looks really, really good. It's got a good pink ring, uh, smoke ring to it. It looks really good and it's very juicy. See the juice in that? Very good. So we'll give it a good bite here. I'm hoping it's not pull off the bone. I want it to be bite through and bite to the bone. So we'll give it a try right now. Cheers, guys. Mmm. Well, that's flavorful. Mmm. It's definitely more fall off the bone than I like. I mean, it's tasty. You can see where it came, came, out, came off the bone altogether. And this is the one that was cooked at 275 for four and a half hours. Spritzed it one time with a little bit of apple cider vinegar and water, and that was it. So it's not just clean off the bone, you know, bite through texture. It's actually pull off the bone texture, which is fine. Not overcooked, just cooked further than I want it to be for my liking, which I, it's okay. It's very flavorful. That, that rub is just fantastic. It was good on chicken and good on pork both. So now next what we'll do, when the other ribs get done, they're still not done. We got about probably another 30 minutes to 50, 45 minutes on those. We'll try one of those as well and, see, and show you that as well and see how they do at 225. For probably closer to six hours they're gonna have cooked, so. All right, folks, we got the other rack done. We saw it was done in about four and a half hours. This one's taking about six hours to get to about, about right at 200 degrees for this rack. Now this rack is actually the salt and pepper rack. We cooked it at two, uh, excuse me, 225. The other one, like I said, we cooked it 275. So this one took a little longer. I think the color of it's fantastic, as you can see. Salt, pepper only, but it looks really, really good. So we'll give this a cut and see how it does. We've given it about 15 minute rest so far. We'll cut some of these ribs and give it a try. Now the last rack, like I said, I think it was a little bit overdone for me. Not, not overcooked, just overdone for my preference as far as liking a um, bite through instead of fall off the bone. Now we got that one cut too, guys. Look at that, it looks fantastic looking rib right there. What do you think, guys? It's uh, very juicy, the color's fantastic. Looks really, really good. I'm real pleased with that, guys. It, uh, as you can see the smoke ring on that thing and the juice is coming out of it. Very, very good. So let's give it a try and see how it tastes. Cheers, guys. Mmm. Wow. That's absolutely delicious, folks. Salt and pepper, just the way I like it. Got a good bite through it. So th the rib is so thick, I couldn't even get all the way through it. You can see the bite there. But I couldn't go all the way down to the bone because it's just such a big, nice piece of meat there. That's fantastic. Let me take another bite here. Let me see how it does. Let's see if I can get down to the bone this time. Mm hmm. Wow. Mm. Juicy. Mm hmm. That's great rib, guys. Fantastic rib. You can see bite there on that for sure. Very pleased with that, guys. Very pleased. So, guys, that does wrap up our conclusion there is that the 275 ribs cooked 275 took a lot less time than the ones at 225. And even the ones at 275 actually got to the point where they were almost fall off the bone tender which is not my, my style, but it was very tender and very juicy and very flavorful. But that much quicker, they got actually to fall off at 275, about an hour, a little over, I guess about an hour and a half, they got done quicker and were more, more done, if you will, as far as tenderness goes. But these, the salt and pepper ribs, I think are actually a little juicier. Uh, I did like that fact of the little, little juicier as they get down into them. Very, very good. So guys, we hope you liked the video. Hope you'll like the video and so hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, guys. We'll meet you at the smoker.